Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking into how we can monitor our Spring Boot application using Prometheus and Grafana. Now Prometheus is a monitoring system and a time series database and we'll be using Prometheus to actually monitor our application and store the metrics data into its time series database. Then we will visualize this particular data onto a Grafana dashboard. Now with this let's get started. Okay so let's go to start.spring.io and we are going to add some dependencies. So we are going to add the Prometheus micrometer dependency and we are going to add the actuator endpoint dependency. Now these two are the only dependencies that you need, but we would be adding one more dependency that is a web dependency in order to create some rest endpoints through which we can generate some log outputs. Okay. Along with this, I'm going to give it a group name and I'm going to call this application as Grafana Prometheus. We're going to use Java 17 and let's generate this project. Now I already have created this project and I've added some particular code to it. So let's look into that. Um, I have this particular project and I have this main class. So this main class is annotated with a rest controller on top. And I have a particular git mapping, which is called something and it's generating some warning logs. Okay. And finally, it's actually returning a okay response. That is a 200 response. Okay. Let's look at actually the dependencies that we have here. So if you see here, we have the micrometer dependency that we added for Prometheus and we added the Spring Boot actuator dependency. here. Now to use the actuator endpoints, we need to add some particular properties. So for this, I've added this management endpoints, which is going to expose one of the web endpoints that is for Prometheus. This is the only configuration that you need to actually ask your Spring Boot application to expose Prometheus specific metrics information. So with this, I'm going to start the application. The application has started now. Let's go to the browser and look at this endpoint called as localhost slash actuator slash Prometheus. Now, if you see here, you get some particular information. Now, what is this information categorized as? It is categorized as something called as labels. So these are the labels and these are its attributes. Now let's look at the first label that is a JVM buffer total capacity bytes. Now this is the label through which you can identify this particular matrix inside Prometheus and you can then query it based on the various attributes. Now, one of the most important ones that we usually look out for is the JVM memory, right? You have the heap and the non heap area for which we are getting this particular numbers. Yes. So now what we are going to do is we are going to start Prometheus and actually query this information and fill it into its database. So for this, what we are going to do is we're going to go back here and we're going to have this particular Docker compose file. So in this Docker compose file, I've added the Prometheus image here and I'm specifying it with a particular volume, giving it the config that is required for Prometheus to start up. Now, along with this, I'm specifying the command line argument to specify the actual file name from which it has to pick up the configuration. And then I'm exposing that particular application using uh, the port 9090. Now you don't need to actually specify this because I'm using the host networking mode. You don't need to specify this. This will use the host network and we are trying to do this to simplify our integration and to make things work properly. Let's look at the configuration file that we have here. So for this, let's go here and we have this Prometheus configuration file. So now if you look at this configuration file here, I have specified a particular job here. Now Prometheus, what it does is it actually queries the application or any place from which it has to gather matrix data. It has these jobs as such. So what these job do is it has a particular regular interval called as a scrape interval using which it actually calls an endpoint to get the matrix information. So what I've specified here is I've specified some target that is my local host application here, which is 8080. And I'm going to specify the matrix path here. So that's actuator slash Prometheus. Along with this, I'm giving it a particular label to specify from which application this is. So this is an application called as my Spring Boot application, which is 
the application that we are running and we are calling this job name as spring boot application endpoint that's it this is the only configuration that you need now if you see these configurations so these are some of the default configuration that you get you could get the matrix endpoint of prometheus itself which is actually running at 1990 uh, you could have yet another endpoints which was usually meant for uh, the node exporter i'm not going to be turning on the node exporter but i can tell you a little bit in brief like the node exporter is one of the uh, components that you can run in order to get matrix data about the particular node so if i start this particular image and run it it will actually start gathering information about my system uh, on which it is running and give us matrix information about this okay um, this is not part of this so let's concentrate on the main one what i'm going to do now is i'm going to start my docker compose file so i'm going to say docker compose up if you can see it has also started grafana because i have this grafana image also here but let's look at first uh, the prometheus web interface so for this what i'm going to do is i'm going to call localhost 9090 and this is the grafana interface now here basically you can query for particular label so remember here we had got some particular label let's look at one of these labels so let's look at this one and when i search for it so if you see here you get the information from that particular label right you can further drill down into the various types of attributes say i want to see of only heap area right so i'm going to specify this this way and i'm going to say heap now this is actually going to give me information of only the heap area and the values against it now in case if you don't get this particular output or you're not able to search this particular label what you could do is you could go to status and check your targets now in your targets here you need to see if the job is actually running and it's actually gathering the data that you need and to check further you could always go back here and type in your first letter of the label and this will give you a drop down list of the various labels that it has already got from some endpoints so this will actually help you to navigate through the various labels so this was prometheus actually gathering information from a spring boot application so prometheus is basically a time series database as such it actually pulls information and stores it in a time series format so now let's actually visualize this onto grafana right so let's look at the grafana image actually so let's go back to our docker compose file back here so looking at the docker compose configuration for grafana here i'm using the grafana uh, open source image here and i'm keeping the host networking mode here then you don't need to actually specify these particular ports i could actually remove them and and then i'm specifying some environment properties like the admin password and some server domain that i have so i'm using it on localhost so that's the reason i'm specifying this so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop the docker compose here and i'm going to restart this docker compose file so docker compose up so now both the images are up and running now let's open grafana at port 3000 so localhost 3000 and the first screen that you'll see is this login screen so that's admin and admin so this is the first thing that you'll see once you log into grafana now what we are going to do is first of all we're going to uh, configure our data source so we are going to go this to this data source section and we're going to add a particular data source so we're going to select prometheus here and i'm going to specify prometheus url so that is http localhost 1990 and with this i'm going to call save and test now what we're going to do we're going to create our first dashboard so let's create click here and then say add new panel so here what we are going to do is we are going to make use of this matrix browser in the matrix browser we can actually search for the label that we want so we can select for the log back events because we are actually interested in to seeing the various warning logs that we actually are going to generate once we hit the particular endpoint on our application so i'm going to select this so this is the resulting selector that happened 
now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say use this okay so if you see here by default it was actually pulling in all the events that it had and it's showing me the graph values here so here you can see it's showing me the info value then this is the worn value and finally we have the trace values here so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add some more information if you press Control space it will actually give you the various attributes that are present so i'm actually interested into the debug log so i'm going to specify this and i'm going to say i want to see debug ones say run query and right now there are no debug logs okay what i'm going to do now is i'm going to specify one box and run this query so it is right now showing me that there's only one warning log now let's actually generate some warning logs so remember we had this particular endpoint that we had created called as something let's actually call that one so let's go here call localhost 8080 slash something and it's saying all okay but we have some warning logs that have been created in our application right so we have this warning log that was been created let's look into grafana and run this query again and as you can see this value has increased so we have now two warning logs here i'm going to change now to show me data of only the last five minutes so as you can see the warning logs have increased to two so we could save this particular information in the dashboard right but usually we don't want the number of warning logs or number of error logs we usually want to know the rate at which the number of warning logs or the number of error logs that have been increased right so what we are going to do is we are going to use a function called as rate so there is a rate function which takes this particular information and we are going to measure it over one minute of time let's call this rate function on this value and as you can see this actually now shows me the rate at which the warning logs have been generated over a period of one minute right now there are no logs being created so it went down back again let's run the query again and it's at zero right now so no logs so it's right now the rate is zero let's actually save this particular panel let's say apply and save now I'm going to auto refresh this using this option here and let it refresh. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call the same endpoint that is something here and go back to our dashboard to see if this particular reflects. So as you can see, I called at least three or four times and the rate has increased for the warning logs. So now we just created this particular dashboard, right? We could always create some more panels and visualize different metrics that we want. But we don't have to create this from scratch all the time. Now, there are quite many community led dashboards that are available, which you can just import. Right now, I'm linking one of those dashboards in the description below, but I have modified that particular dashboard in order to work with the new Spring Boot application. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my ID and I'm going to open the Spring Boot stat statistic dashboard, JSON. I'm going to copy this content come here and say import and here i'm going to paste this particular json let's load this and let's select the prometheus data source i'll click import and that's it we have a complete dashboard containing all the different metrics of cpu usage the g1 old generation heap the amount of heap been used, non-heap statistics, everything is present in this particular dashboard. So this is the power of Grafana that because it's an open source application, uh, there are quite many community provided dashboards that you can use out of the box. So today we saw how we can monitor our Spring Boot application using Prometheus and Grafana. We also created a sample dashboard to visualize the rate at which the warning logs are being produced. And then afterwards we saw a full-fledged dashboard wherein we have all the metrics for a Spring Boot application. I hope you like this particular video. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel and see you in my next one.